Good afternoon. In my sermon on Sunday and in my last video devotion, I talked about Rachel's troubled life. She had been used as an object between her scheming father and her trickster husband, and she was unable to have children, which was considered to be a curse in those days. But Rachel's older sister, Leah, would probably respond by saying something like, oh, go cry me a river. Let's look at the family story from Leah's perspective. Now, just to remind you, Leah and Rachel were sisters. Leah was the older one and Rachel was the younger one. The Bible tells us that Rachel had a lovely figure and was beautiful, but that Leah had weak eyes. Now, we're not quite sure how to interpret that. Does that mean she was nearsighted? Or does it mean that she made your eyes hurt when you looked at her? Well, regardless, we know Rachel was the pretty one and Leah was not. So Jacob comes along and makes a deal with Leah and Rachel's father, Laban. I'll work for you for seven years in order to be able to marry beautiful Rachel. That would mean that Leah was being passed over and by rights, the older sister should be the first one to get married. So their father tricked Jacob into marrying Leah instead of Rachel, and he did it in order to get Jacob to work seven more years to be able to marry Rachel. Now, how do you think this made Rachel feel? Now, on the one hand, she got married, and it would have been a real problem for her if she had never found a husband. But on the other hand, her father had to trick someone into marrying her. Jacob didn't marry her because he wanted to. That's the perfect recipe for an awful marriage. And it only got worse when Jacob eventually married Leah's younger, prettier sister, Rachel. Now, because our society doesn't have polygamy, we're not familiar with the dynamics of having more than one wife in a family. The first thing for us to know is that there is usually a very strict hierarchy. The first wife has authority over the other newer wives. But also, it's very common for there to be jealousy between wives. So for Leah to be in charge as the first wife did not make up for the fact that her husband only had eyes for Rachel. Or, as the Bible puts it, his love for Rachel was far greater than his love for Leah. So Leah's day-to-day -day life was filled with constant humiliation. Her father thought the only way for her to find a husband was to trick him into marrying her. And her husband didn't have the time of day for her. She was overshadowed by her little sister in the day-to-day -day life of the family, despite her senior position. Now the Lord is the God who cares about and cares for the lowly, and the despised and the rejected. And so the Bible tells us that when the Lord saw that Leah was not loved, he enabled her to conceive while her sister Rachel remained childless. Now, in those days, the ability to have children was the crowning achievement for women and for wives. And because this is a patriarchal society, sons, of course, were more important than daughters. And so Leah had sons because the Lord cared about her. Now the names of Rachel's children tell us the story of her life, her hopes, her desires, her struggles. She named her first son Reuben, which means God has seen my misery. She recognized God cared for her in the midst of her miserable situation. Her second son, she named Simeon, which means God has heard me. God knows that I am not loved, and he has shown me his love. The third son's name was Levi, and his name implies that maybe now my husband will care about me. Up to this point, her life had been all about pain and struggle, and apparently having two sons still wasn't enough to get Jacob to care about Leah. She was still not loved. She was still aching for her husband to care about her. And each son, in his own way, demonstrated to her 
that the Lord cared for her when no one else did. And this culminated in the name of her fourth son, Judah, which means praise. Leah was able to praise the Lord who cared for her and blessed her even when no one else did. When the circumstances of her life were crushing her down, the Lord responded. He acted in order to turn her misery into praise. So when you are in a distressing situation, seek God and watch for how he may bring you sources of praise, just as he did for Leah. Will you pray with me, please? Lord, I suspect that each of us, in our own ways, at times feel like Leah, overlooked, unloved, ignored, passed over for someone else that people like better. Remind us, Lord, that you never pass over us. You never ignore us or reject us or fail to love us. So help us, Lord, to turn to you and help us to recognize the ways in which you bring blessing into our lives so that we, like Leah, will be able to find words of praise for you. Amen. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again later.